as a continuation to what we looked at in the last video, which you can check up top, uh, where we tried to just execute a simple program, the ping program in our own program, while also being able to do something else other than just executing it using fork. So we had here a fork and then in the child process, we executed this uh, ping program, but in the parent process, we just waited for that ping prog program to finish its execution. And then we did some post processing. Now, I didn't look at how to check if this program that we launched uh, actually succeeded. Okay, so if we launch the program, how do we check if it actually succeeded or if we got some errors? Um, well, there are two types of errors here. One is if the actual ping program does not exist, is not found, or two, if the actual ping is found, is executed, but it gives out an error. How can we treat each of the error types here? Well, the first one is very simple. What we have to do is remember that exec, in fact, does basically replace all the code and all the memory of our current process only if it's successful, only if it's successful in finding the program that it needs to execute and so on and so forth. If it doesn't find it, if something's wrong with the name of the program, then it does in fact not replace the code and it continues its execution. Okay, so it uh, in fact will return a an integer that represents well whether or not it was successful. So here we can say error equals the return value of this exec. And if error is negative one, which is most likely gonna be, I don't think it can actually return anything other than negative one, because well, if it's successful, it's just replaced and nothing executes after the exec function. So that's what happens. But if, well, we're gonna just be safe and actually check if it's negative one. And if it is, we can just print f uh, could not find program to execute. Makes a shine for something like that and just return, return zero like that. So as you can see, it did actually ping to google.com. Okay, 64 bytes, it, it took like 15 milliseconds, it works. And then we do uh, print out these messages after the ping program works. That's nice, but what if the ping is actually wrongly spelled? Let's say I, I type in ping r, for example. And if I launch this, what's gonna happen then? Well, in that case, you'll notice that it, we do indeed printf could not find a program to execute. So in this case, it didn't find a program to execute, so it did not execute, it did not replace the code, and it just continued its execution. Now then, what if it is successful in finding the program, but instead, let's say we don't uh, type in the right domain name, and let's say we type in google. Uh, I don't know, con, let's say. If we try to launch this, you're gonna notice that we do get in the ping, uh, in the ping program, we do get a message saying that the name or service is not known. Of course, it doesn't exist. It doesn't know how to ping to it. But we just say success here, even though the ping did not succeed. How do we know it succeeded? How can we find out if it did succeed? Well, that answer lies in the wait function. So remember, every time we called wait, was with the null here, with a null parameter, and that was it. In fact, this, this parameter tells us some information about what happened with the child process, okay? So it is an int pointer, so we, we actually declare here an int, let's call it wait status, and we pass in a reference to it, w status, okay? And after this has executed, something will be populated into here that will tell us what happened, but we have to make use of some macros to be able to find out. Now there are two checks that we have to do with this W status. So after it finished its execution, we have to test if the, if the code, if the program just simply terminated on its own, right? So nothing actually occurred. There was no external signal, for example, when you when you, for example, in the task manager and try to kill the task, it wouldn't be a normal termination of the problem. It would just, uh, something external would just terminate the process. Similarly, in Linux, you can do this you, by sending the sig kill signal. We'll get to signals in a later video, but just keep in mind that this sig kill, basically, if you send it to a process, it just terminates the process, well, not normally. So to check if the process terminated normally, we can say if, and we can call the if or w if exited 
macro. So this is a macro that takes in the W status. So if this guy, this W, if exited, returns true or returns something different than zero, then we know that what happened here was normal termination. So the program finished its execution normally. Next up, we can actually take the status code that that ping program exited with. So you can say here int status code equals w exit status of w status. So this is going to return our status code. What is that status code that I am talking about? That is the return value inside the main or the value that it exited with using the exit call. So remember this, this is our status code. This is what we're returning. So here we are returning zero saying, okay, the pro program executed properly. Here up top, we're returning one saying that the program did not execute, did not finish properly and uh, something bad happens. In fact, every single Linux program has that, has that return at uh, either in the main function or it has an exit call of one. These two are basically the same. It's just that you can call exit one, whatever. You don't have to have it inside the main function. Anyway, in Linux, a, an exit code that is not zero signifies an error. So here we have one as an error. Here we should probably type in instead of return zero, return two, because it is an error in fact. And here we have return zero. So we can say status code is this so if the status code is zero then we know that it was a success in executing the program otherwise we can say print f failure failure backslash n and uh, yeah that's about it we can leave this print f here why not but this status code should really always be zero for programs that have executed properly. Uh, if it's not, it's an error. So we can, if we try to run this now, you will notice something interesting. As you can see, it did say that the google.con name or service is not known in ping, so that's fine. But here we have printed failure. This is from our parent process. So indeed, the status code that we got was not zero. We can actually check which status code we got. So we can say failure with status code percent D and we can have it here status code. And if I try to launch this, we should get, I think it was a uh, status code two. Now this two here doesn't really have any intrinsic meaning uh, for ping is just saying that it is just another error. If we were, if we were to get one, that would mean that we didn't get a response from the server. And this is another error saying that we probably did not actually even get to the server because again, google.com with an N at the end does not exist. So it doesn't know how to ping that. And again, a status code two from the ping doesn't mean that it's the same error for other programs, right? So uh, two for ping means other errors, but for other programs, let's say our own program, that could mean a specific error saying that something went wrong with, I don't know, opening the pipe. Or as it is for us here, something went wrong with uh, executing the child process. I would, that's the two that it, it's in here, but uh, these two shouldn't be confused with this one. These two is actually from the pink program and this is actually from our own program, okay? And of course, if we do change this back to com, so it says google.com and it is valid. If we launch this, what we are going to get is a proper success message. That means that the status code that we got here was in fact zero. And if it's zero, everything went smoothly. And we did in fact get some pings to google.com. And there are all sorts of information you can get from this W status. I'm gonna leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Otherwise, I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care. Bye.